everyone let's review for the board exam together so let's start with the first question which is faith a dental hygienist was asked to provide information about a new periodontal laser treatment for her client which studies should the hygienist read up on before providing the information to the client and if we look at the options and if you remember from your evidence-based class or from your research class there was a pyramid that we looked at and in that pyramid, which one is the best study? If you are thinking D, meta-analysis systematic review, you are correct. So let's look at this in more detail. You may recall a pyramid that looks something like this where the studies are ranked on a hierarchy. And the number one study that you may remember is your meta-analysis systematic review, followed the run right after is randomized control trial, then cohort case control, and so you can see the order listed here. Now one thing that's just an FYI that I want you guys to know is above the meta-analysis systematic review, you'll notice that the clinical practice guidelines are always number one. So the clinical practice guidelines that come out by your regulatory body is what you should be following because when they come out with those practice with those practice guidelines they are using meta-analysis systematic review study to come up with their guidelines an example of a clinical practice guidelines that come from your regulatory body would be infection control so ipac should you wear a, a gown when do you wear a gown um, when do you give antibiotic prophylaxis? So all of those rules, those practice guidelines, they um, publish them. They let you know this. And where do they get the information from? From meta-analysis systematic review, because that's like the top type of um, study to get information from. So let's dig down into what meta-analysis systematic review is. And I found this great image. It's from Sunny Downstate. And it's basically saying that, um, let's say you want to do a study on new periodontal laser treatment. So you go out to a reliable source like PubMed, Cochrane, and you search new periodontal laser. And you find, let's say, four studies that talk about this, this laser. And these are the top four studies that are out there. And to get those top four studies, like there's like rigorous research that you must do in order to get those top studies. So all of these studies are excellent studies, no bias. What a meta-analysis systematic review is, is they combine the findings of those study and then they publish it and they tell us about what all of these studies said. Now, if math was involved, if it's quantitative, if when you read the results, you see numbers, you see uh, quantitative data, it is meta-analysis. So meta-analysis means math was involved. If it is just a systematic review and the word meta-analysis is not there, systematic review, what does that mean? That just means that, uh, again, they did the same procedure. They found top four studies or top X amount of studies. It doesn't have to be four. It could be top 10. It could be top 50. It could be top 100. And you combine it. But when no numbers, no quantitative data is present in the result, in the published paper, then it is just a systematic review. So meta-analysis means quantitative numbers, quantitative data such as numbers are present in the study. Best type of study that's out there because it finds the best study that you can possibly find and combine it into one paper. Randomized control trial, this is your second best study. So here you have a group of clients and you randomly random assignment being the key word put them into their groups and then you follow up to see what condition they get so for example if i have a group of uh, patients right over here and i randomly put some people in the treatment group so treatment group means these are the people that's going to get the um, intervention the treatment so in this case perhaps these are the people that are going to get the electric toothbrush because i want to know if electric toothbrush works better than the manual toothbrush so all the people that randomly got put in here and randomly how maybe i chose their name from a hat and if their name got chosen um, from a hat the first five people go into the treatment group the remaining people go into the control group the control group are the people that that continue as it so they continue using the manual regular toothbrush you follow them over time and let's see what we have here only one person has gingivitis everyone else is pretty healthy with the electric toothbrush but if we look at the control group the people that use the regular manual toothbrush three people had gingivitis compared to one person that had it 
with the electric toothbrush. And then you can publish your findings based on what you see here. So randomized control trials, second best study. The, why, the reason why it's the second best study is because of the random assignment. When you do random assignment, there is no bias. The bias becomes very low. The third best study is the cohort study. So cohort study is when you have two groups of people, you follow them over time, and then you see who gets sick, for example. So here we have two groups of people, people that smoke, people that don't smoke. You follow them over time, and you see who gets lung cancer. So people that get that are smokers develop lung cancer. Three of the five got lung cancer. People who are non-smokers, if you follow them over 10 years, for example, only one person got lung cancer, and perhaps that could be because of second-hand smoke, because of pollution, uh, it could be because of other variables. So this is your third best study. The reason why it's the third West best study is because no randomization occurred. You just have a group of people, you did not randomly put them in a group. The last one I want to touch on, which was an option in the, in the quiz, was or is case control study. Case control study is when you have a group of people, so people that have cancer, and then you compare it with a group of people that are healthy, that don't have cancer, and this is the key difference. You are going backwards in time. You're taking their health history, you're taking their medical history to see why they got cancer. And perhaps the reason these people got cancer was because they were smokers. And you, how did you know that? You took their history to figure that out. And the people that are healthy, you took their history and none of them were smokers, that's why they are healthy. Case control studies are also known as a retrospective study. Retrospective because you're going backwards in time to see why they got sick. Cohort study are known as prospective study because you're going forward in time. Prospective study. Alright, so let's just look at this one last time. So meta-analysis systematic review is the highest level of evidence. If we look at the pyramid, meta-analysis is always the highest. And if you have to um, go up a notch, clinical practice guidelines are even better because when your regulatory body comes up with their guidelines that you must follow, um, they use the top studies to come up with their guidelines. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for listening.